This is Dr. Monahan recording the 28th session with patient Tyler Matthews. How are you feeling today, Tyler? 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 Um, good. No, oh, wait. That's a lie. I've been stressed, uneasy. I can't sleep. It says here in your previous report that you've experienced hallucinations, that you have them quite frequently. Have you experienced them lately? A few, yes. Since I ran out of medication, they're happening more. Well, tell me about these hallucinations. Are they different or are they similar? They're different. And similar. How so? Depends on where I'm at. It's always the same four. No, it's always one of the four. There's a woman. I think she's dead. Man in all black. He wears a black coat and a black bag around his face and a black hat. Let's let's change the subject. Is that alright with you? Your final hearing is quickly approaching. How do you feel about that? I would imagine someone in this situation would feel very stressed. Tyler, do you feel like the stress that you're feeling could be related to the court hearing? That it may have an impact on these hallucinations? Maybe. Tyler, I'm going to prescribe you some more medication to take with your dosage and uh, maybe that'll help you. Lufenazine takes two times a day. It's to improve thinking, mood, behavior, drowsiness, lethargy, dizziness, nausea, sweating, dry mouth, blurred vision, headache. May cause patient to commit murder. Wrong with me.
Hi, my name is Michael Scabby, and I'm the director of the short film, The Void. This is a story about a man who's losing his mind and is being constantly tormented by a dark figure. Originally, the story had more of a fairy tale feel to it. Um, the man who we see here was supposed to be haunted by three other figures. Originally, this movie was entitled Three Figures, but after some discussion, we decided not to go that route. In this scene, he's discussing with a psychiatrist that he's seeing hallucinations of these different figures. I liked the idea of these three figures trying to recruit him by slowly driving him crazy. I wanted the scene to look very sickly. I, everything is tinted green, and I wanted it to not be a comfortable place. I wanted it to be very cold. All of this was shot on a Canon 7D, and I was able to manipulate the settings. All of the color grading was done in camera. I've since been scolded not to be shooting like this because we can always fix it in post and make it look the way we want to in post, but I, I like to do things in camera so that I can see what it looks like and that the actors when we do playback can see what it looks like. So I like to shoot things in camera and do playback for them. That way if they see the scene and they get the idea, they get the tone, that could actually influence their performance. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I like to do it for myself and I like to do it for the actors. I did learn something very, very interesting on this shoot. My actor, Corey Kewen, is playing our main character, Tyler, here. Normally in editing, what I like to do is I don't like the audience's eyes to get bored, so I like to switch up the shots. But what I learned with Corey here was that his performance was actually so good that I found it was more entertaining to just watch his performance. And so in editing, I actually I did the opposite of what I like to do. And instead, I just kind of let the image focus on him for quite long takes. That was something very interesting that I learned on this that I'm going to be taking into my next films. That if an actor is doing a good job, for goodness sake, don't pull the image away from them. Of course, every scene is different and every editor is going to have a different idea of how this should have been shot. But I learned that if an actor is doing a very good job and their performance all by itself is very entertaining, I'll just leave it on them, especially when there's not really much going on in, in this room. At the end of the scene here, we did have an extra scene where she gave him the pills. We did shoot this and we did edit it into one of our previous versions, but there were enough people saying that a, a psychiatrist would not have the pills on them, that they would prescribe them, and then of course the person would go and get them from another source. And it happened so frequently that eventually I just cut it out. The shots with Susan's character, the psychiatrist, were actually shot about a month later. We were lucky to get the same building. The people who work at the building were actually very, very accommodating and allowed us to get another room. I really love this shot. It's the first time I ever shot something looking in camera at the space and thought, wow, this looks like a real movie, which of course is the point. It was the first time ever I would utilized all the things that I knew about camera work and getting your camera settings. The way that it looks here looks very dark and blue, like it's dusk or something. However, we shot this probably around three o'clock in the afternoon. It just happened to be a really shady area and I used the soft lighting to, to my advantage to make it look dark and cloudy. However, um, this is actually a very bright lit scene. I really took my time making that fake medicine label there. The bottle itself was real. I had some leftover pills that I had and I just emptied it out, took the label off and put our character's label on it. I would almost say that this whole story exploded from this one image that's about to take place right here of this dark figure jumping in off screen and taking his medicine from him. It's just the way I envisioned it. I thought it was a very haunting image. Everything kind of branched out from this one scene. We were really fighting the sunset here. I had to constantly keep opening up my lens to, to compensate for the loss of light. So as you see, there are some color changes. Luckily, they kind of match up. I really like this last shot here where he goes out of focus. I really wanted this movie to have horror elements. This isn't a horror movie. However, this kitchen scene here with the way that it's lit definitely gives off that vibe. I did know that I wanted a color temperature difference in the lights there. I knew that I wanted a tungsten light coming down from the kitchen sink and I knew that I wanted a fluorescent blue light coming from the other side of the kitchen. It's a very unexplained light where it's coming from, but I, I didn't care. It was one of those things where I was going for more style than practical. 
I really wanted to show that his mind was slipping, and I believe these shots really convey that really well, that he's slowly slipping into madness. You see these rack shots here. Eventually he goes into his mind, and it's just this dark, never-ending void. I wanted it to be a space of emptiness, loneliness, and that the only thing there was this dark figure. However, as you see in the scene, the dark figure is not as violent as before. It's not really shown visually here, but this dark figure is actually just an extension of our character Tyler here. I also wanted this to be kind of a sad story where a man is locked away in his mind. The only door out is chained and it has vanished from eternity. That he's going to be stuck in this place forever. We shot this scene in a basketball court with a few black backgrounds. On this shoot, we didn't have any of the film equipment from the school. I bought some 120 watt floodlights from Home Depot. I set up four points around him. I closed up the lens as far as it would go and the fall off was actually pretty, pretty significant. The fall off was pretty intense. As you see, as, even in this last shot, I stood up on a chair and I lifted the camera over him and looked straight down on him and even then you can't even see the ground that he's standing on. I did go back and do some digital manipulation to a lot of these shots. For example, the actor who played the dark figure was my friend Carson. I had to shoot him separately from Tyler. I comped him into the same scene. This is probably my favorite shot in the whole short film. Again, in camera color correcting. I really love the shot of the light here. I always feel really bad about what I did to this character, locking him away in his mind forever and ever. This is not a happy ending. This shot of the black figure looking at him through the door. I wanted to show that the dark figure was still a tormentor in his life even while he's in this, even while he's in this mental hospital. And the last shot of the dark figure closing the door and walking away in slow motion was a must-have for me. A very strong image to end the story on. I really want to give props to the actor who played this part, Corey Kewen. He was able to emote this insanity that was way more than I expected. He actually kept his eyes open for a very long time so that it could achieve that redness and that tired look. The location that we shot at was very important. It's actually a boys and girls club and I worked there for many years. I've always wanted to shoot a movie here because of how much I believe that it looked like an insane asylum. Okay, so that's my director's commentary for my short film, The Void. Thank you for listening.